What up, Free Dart fans? Jonathan and Eric here with you today, and we are going to go through some mask accessories, what you do when you buy a new mask, and what you can do to kind of trick out your mask. Yes. So we have a lot of accoutrement placed in front of us here that we're going to step by step go through all this stuff. Let's do it. All right, so Eric, we are gonna talk about a bunch of different things, uh, including like the surface around a mask, right? Absolutely. Um, I kind of want to dive into the defog first. I've bought a brand new mask, kind of want to get in the water, obviously, make sure that it seals around my face. We've talked about that in our other mask video, but now that I've found one that fits my face, what do I do? Cool. Great question. Thank you. Jonathan. Thank you. So. With any new mask, I don't care where it comes from, whether it's a hundred and fifty dollar super carbon ultra, fiber yeah. tinted lens, the highest quality mask you can buy and the lowest quality mask you can buy, all use pretty much the same process of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit of difference, right. but they all have a coating of silicone that ends up on the lenses, and that's just part of the habitat that they're in. They're in a silicone rich environment when they're being put together. So those lenses actually on the inside and outside um, have a little thin coating. You can't see it, it's clear, you would never know that it's there, right. except for the fact that when you go dive with that mask, if you haven't treated the lenses properly, it's gonna fog up. Whether you use any of these defogs or anything, spit, whatever, it's gonna it's fog gonna up fog. no matter what. Um, that silicone just causes it to happen. Right. So what you need to do is get that coating off of the lenses. And I've heard You just burn it off. It's a fire hazard. <laughs> this is a, a wooden wall behind us. <laughs> Can't you just burn the silicone film off the mask? So, this is a very common thing. Yes, you can take a flame to your lenses. <laughs> it is not going to damage or harm your lenses, except in the case sometimes certain types of tinting, or if you have plastic lenses, that's obviously not going to go over well. Um, you can do it. It's not going to harm the mask. It's not going to melt it. It's not going to damage it. As anything. long as you keep it on the glass, right? Obviously. Exactly. Yeah. If you start torching the plastic frame, <laughs> that could be could be bad. And usually people do it with a lighter, right? Not a blow torch. <laughs> um, anyway, this is kind of a personal theory. Okay. I don't have a ton of backing behind this, other than my knowledge of silicone itself. Okay. Which is what's on the lenses. Mm -hmm. Silicone is very heat resistant resistant right. and burns at a very high, high temperature. So I personally don't think that burning the lenses does that much, much to help you. Interesting. I mean, you do like, you cook with silicone and you can leave it in the pan and it doesn't melt. Yes. So they even what? have silicone coated frying pans nowadays, which are, you know, that's kind of a testament to, <laughs> yeah, to how it's resistance. not going to burn <laughs> off the, the lens. And a lot of people think, and they kind of do the thing where they see the ring come around when you put a lighter underneath that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't know what I'm talking about, we'll have a little video that shows you what that ring looks like um, when you put a lighter underneath the mask. And everyone says that that's silicone burning away. That's not It's true. not. No, right? that is actually water, it's condensation from the heat of the flame against the cold glass causes it to condensate. And then the black <laughs> around it is the soot. The black right? is soot from the butane in the lighter. Black is not burnt silicone. Uh, actually, when silicone burns, it turns white. So if anything, the fact that there's no white on the lenses is a sign to me that no silicone has burned off. Now, the, the only process that I have found to truly work, because I've burned a lot of lenses and I've scrubbed a lot of lenses, mm -hmm. um, is the scrubbing process. And what I've liked the best, I've used all like the different you know, methods different, and yeah, home different remedies stuff. and stuff like that. You've probably heard of using toothpaste or baking soda, mm -hmm. and a myriad of other things. Um, Comet is a pretty common yep. one, although I would not want that in my eyeballs. <laughs> um, there's a stuff from Gear Aid called Sea Buff, and it's actually a cleaner. It's designed for scrubbing masks and like dive slates and stuff like that, um, but it has a little bit of some chemicals in there that help dissolve the silicone. Some safe chemicals. Some like safe chemicals, yep. yep. It actually says right on the top, gentle cleaner. <laughs> 
Um, and it also has an abrasive in it. And it's a little bit more of an aggressive abrasive than you'd get in a toothpaste or baking soda right. or anything like that. Um, so it's gonna have a, like a bigger grit to it that's much more capable of scrubbing that silicone off of there. And that's what you're really doing, right? You're actually removing that film, that silicone film on the inside of the lens with that abrasive material, right? So uh, again, we've talked about the lighter trick and yes, it can work, but essentially you're still not pulling that silicone film off of the lens and using a product like Seabuff absolutely does that. Um, I get a lot of people who also ask the question, well, don't I need to clean the outside of my lens as well? And um, the reality is, is that you don't. Uh, and the reason why is, let's talk about kind of what creates fog. The heat from your face and the coldness or coolness of the water. And that temperature change creates the fog, just like in your uh, windshield, right? Uh, when you hop in your car on a cold day, uh, and you turn your AC on or your heat on and it fogs up real bad. Or like when you put a hot lighter on the inside and the oh. lens fogs up. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> um, so what we're trying to do is create uh, something to get that silicone film away so that um, it kind of doesn't have that fog up anymore. So using that C buff is going to be to take away that first film, but just using this doesn't actually keep you from fogging for the rest of your diving career, right? right? You need to treat this on a daily basis and really on a dive by dive basis. For sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit away from the sea buff. We've treated our mask. Um, we've kind of put two dots in there. We've rubbed it around a bunch, let it dry for 30 seconds or so, wiped it out, did it again. I like to do it about three or four times. Yeah, that's um, something I was going to mention is you do want to do it a couple of times. Scrub and rinse and scrub and rinse, um, which they do actually say that on the directions mm. is to do it multiple times. They also say to Who do the outside that? of the lens. There ain't no reason but to do that. But there is no reason to do that. Um, one more thing I kind of wanted to just touch on real quick. I think the safest bet is to do both. If you burn the lens first, oh, oh. that it may compromise the structure of the um, silicone on there might help with the scrubbing process mm. but ultimately it is the scrub that is getting do the, trick. the stuff out of there so now we have these fine candidates in front of us these are all different types of defogs and people always ask what's the best defog out there um, these are most of the ones that we carry here in the shop and honestly they all work about the same pretty much they all work well yes um, the main difference is going to be the consistency of the material itself so for example here we've got this orange cap and the gold cap they're actually both the same product just one is like a syrup and one is a gel so next up one of our most popular um, defogs is the quick spit and it's very popular because it's a liquid mm -hmm. unlike the gel and the syrup type and it's a spray as well so you get a nice little <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that again. There it is. <laughs> okay. So the next one up on here is the Quick Spit. It's a really popular one here at the shop. Um, it is a liquid instead of a gel or a syrup, and it actually is a little bit of a spray as well. Um, so you have that nice little, it's easy to just whoosh, hit the whole that's, lens That's quick. my favorite um, because I can kind of, one guy can grab it, everyone kind of holds their mask out, and you just kind of go around, and you're like, go down the pump. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the quick spit the best. I uh, won't be fogging today. <laughs> you won't be fogging. Not if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and then, uh, these two bigger bottles are just the same thing as the, uh, the orange cap and the gold cap. So C um, drops and C gold, um, basically just in bigger format. So you just kind of get the, the bulk buy um, and then you can either refill these little guys or just use it straight out of the, the big caps bottle. Definitely uh, having some sort of defog is a mandatory solution. Um, there are definitely some other things out there that you can try. Um, some of the home remedies, right, that are definitely most popular would be like a baby shampoo uh, or even spit, just like your saliva. Sure. Um, both of those work pretty well. These work better. They do work a little bit better. And honestly, the main reason why I prefer these is they don't bother your eyes at all. Even baby shampoo is not super comfortable in your right. eye. 
right. it doesn't they call it no tear or whatever but this stuff does not bother your eyes Correct. and that's what i like the most about yeah. it yeah for sure um so moving on we're gonna get rid of the defogs and we're gonna move into some mask tricks Accessories. some trick mac mask pieces <laughs> um so if your mask is super comfortable right out of the box, that's great. I'm not talking about the fit, I'm talking about the wear. Yeah. Um, so most masks come with a silicone strap on them, such as these guys, right? So this is a standard silicone strap. And usually that gets the job just fine. They stay in place really well, which is nice. Um, they don't slip. Room for your ponytail. They have room for my ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can fit my whole afro through that thing. <laughs> Anyway, um, but what happens a lot is people with longer hair, girls or guys with afros, um, that silicone strap in conjunction with the snorkel keeper is what I find actually does mm -hmm. the biggest the thing there. Um, that silicone strap grabs your hair pretty bad. And when you're taking the mask off, you end up, you know, I get by the end of a Bahamas trip, I've got like you're one bald in one spot. spot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they make a bunch of different things out there to help remedy that. Um, so you have these nice neoprene strap covers, which do help. All different colors too. Yep, all different colors. We've got ones with the Florida Food Abbey's logo on there. Those are the ones you want. Rep the brand. For sure. Um, so this one, as you were uh, looking at, is a uh, Velcro. So you can leave the strap on the mask itself and literally just pop the Velcro, slap this guy over your strap. And boom. boom, in three seconds, you've got a mask strap to help kind of slide over that hair that you've got. For sure. The other kind, which is actually the one that I prefer, um, is a full replacement strap. So it's also Velcro, but you need to remove the whole strap off the mask, and then you just loop this through the, the clips on the through mask. Through, yeah. um, the reason why I like this one better is it gets rid of all the silicone. Yeah, there's, there's no this little bit right here on the edge, still can catch your hair. Um, so as well as the, the neoprene mask strap, if you're still having issues with your mask grabbing your hair, I recommend switching to both the strap and a neoprene snorkel keeper. So I have a bunch of silicone snorkel keepers out in front of me here, um, which of all cool colors. Yeah, they all work really well. This is actually like one of the best upgrades you can probably make to your snorkel is switching to one of these. But if it's bothering your hair, use this guy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did find value in this content, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. And we're actually getting close to our 1,000 subscribers now, so pretty excited about that. Uh, be sure to be on the lookout for a contest that we're going to do or just having a dance party with, uh, <laughs> with Eric. Uh, but yeah, soon we'll be having a contest. We'll be releasing that via probably Instagram. Um, so just if you're not on that platform, make sure that you go check us out on Instagram as well. Hit us up on the gram. On the gram. On the gram. Slide into our DMs. All for the gram. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Eric, what kind of questions do you have for our viewers today? Um, so we talked a lot about masks and how to remove that silicone coating on there. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what you have found works best for you, whether it's burning or <laughs> scrubbing. Much safer, no please. <laughs> um, what have you find found works the best? So let us know down in the comments below. Sounds good. Like, favorite, subscribe. All those things. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. See ya. Thank you so much for watching our video, guys. If you guys did find good value in this content, please make sure you subscribe and check out our other videos, especially this one right here. It's one of my favorites.